In the early 1900s, coal miners in North America started to take canaries down into the mines with them. Mining was a dangerous job at the time due to the possibility of carbon monoxide in the mines. The canaries acted as low-tech carbon monoxide detectors because their tolerance to carbon monoxide is less than that of humans. So if the canary died or fell ill while in the mine, it was a warning to the miners that it was time to evacuate. In much the same way that mining canaries served as warnings to the miners, stack canaries serve as a warning to the computer that there's been a buffer overflow. If you watch my buffer overflow video, you may remember that buffer overflows usually target a portion of memory called the return address in order to take control of program execution. A stack canary is just a randomly chosen number that sits between any buffers and the return address of the function. When the function is ready to return, before we jump to the return address, the canary is checked to make sure it's the same original value. If it's not the same value, then the program will crash and no more code will be executed. This defends against a buffer overflow because in order to get to the return address, the buffer overflow must overwrite the canary. And since the attacker doesn't know the canary value, the computer will be alerted to the buffer overflow and crash before jumping to the return address. It may seem a little counterintuitive, but crashing is much better than letting an attacker successfully perform a buffer overflow. The one big downside of a canary is that it's relatively straightforward to bypass. There are two main ways to bypass a canary. The first is to take advantage of what's called a stack leak to get the value of the canary straight from the stack. Once this is done, an attacker just has to write the canary value back in during a buffer overflow to avoid detection. I won't talk much more about this approach because it requires a separate vulnerability and we haven't talked about stack leaks on this channel yet, so don't worry about this too much. The second way to bypass a canary is to guess the value. Astute viewers may have noticed that a canary can be bypassed by guessing the value and writing it back in place when doing a buffer overflow. But exactly how feasible is it to guess the canary value? Depending on what computer you're on, a canary can be, say, a 32-bit number, meaning that its numeric range is somewhere between 0 and roughly 4 billion. Given that the canary changes for each program run, our chances of guessing the canary correctly is roughly 1 over 4 billion. So not very good. Thankfully, some modern service architectures start with a master program and spawn worker programs for every request. When a worker program is spawned on Linux, it uses fork, which is a Linux system call that clones the current program. Our big break is that this cloned worker program uses the same stack canary as the master program, meaning that all the workers use the same stack canary. Thus, we get essentially as many tries as we want for programs that use this master worker architecture. Now, the only thing we have left to do is to reduce the number of possibilities that we have to try, because any way we slice it, 4 billion tries is going to take a long time. Before I give a solution, I want to frame the question and give a moment for you to think about it from the perspective of an attacker. To review, the problem is that we have a stack canary on the stack that's between our buffer and the return address that we want to overwrite. Assume that, thanks to many worker processes discussed earlier, that we can have as many guesses as we want. Our job is to figure out what the canary is in the least amount of guesses possible. I would encourage you to pause the video here and try to figure it out for yourself. I'll wait a moment. Okay, the method that I'm about to show allows us to guarantee the correct canary value in at most 1,024 guesses which is a big improvement over our 4 billion from before. The big realization that we have to make is that we need to view the canary as a buffer of bytes instead of just a number. A 32-bit canary would be 4 bytes, and each byte can take a value from 0 to 255. This is how a computer represents a number internally. All 4 bytes together make up the canary. Say the canary we need to guess is 1,380,587,450. If we translate this number into base 16 hexadecimal, we get this, which can be split into bytes like this and converted to base 10 decimal to make it easier for us to work with. So the numbers we have to guess in order to get the canary correct are 82, 74, 23, and 186. When we guess all these numbers correctly, the computer will interpret these four bytes as this number, and we'll be able to successfully bypass the stack canary. Remember that in a real attack, we wouldn't know this number beforehand. I'm only introducing it so we can see more clearly how we can guess it. 
Initially, the stack is gonna look like this, with the canary sitting between our buffer and the return address. To guess the first number, there are 256 possible values, so we'll try each one. The main idea of this attack is that we're only gonna overwrite up to the number that we're trying to guess. It's essential that we don't overwrite anymore because even though we don't know what the rest of the canary is, we know that the remaining bytes are correct because they're a part of the original canary. Thus, once we choose the correct first number, the entire canary will be correct and the program will not crash. In this way, we're actually able to deduce one number at a time. Although the program will crash every time our guess is wrong because the canary will be incorrect, once we guess the first number correctly, the program will not crash and we know that we have found the correct first byte. We proceed with the rest of the bytes in the same way, all the way until we get all four bytes correct, in which case we've guessed the canary. This type of incremental solving for the canary relies on the fact that at any one time, we're guaranteed that all of the bytes are correct except the one we're guessing. All the bytes to the right of the one we're guessing are guaranteed to be correct because they're part of the original canary and we haven't overwritten them. All the bytes to the left of the one we're guessing are guaranteed to be correct because we deduced them in a previous step. The worst case number of guesses for this approach is 256 times 4 because there are 256 choices for each byte and 4 bytes we have to solve for. We can see how incrementally solving this problem one byte at a time is much more efficient than just trying to guess the entire number at once. Stack canaries in general provide a decent amount of security and are very simple to understand and implement. Despite some of their shortcomings, stack canaries are still used today and have good synergy with other security measures which we may cover later in the channel. As always, thanks for watching.